Hi guys, so I'm probably sure you're all fully aware by now that I absolutely love orcs and with my new love of also painting um, yeah, you will see quite a few orcs coming up in some videos because well, I just can't get enough of painting especially now I am trying out some new tips and tricks that I've obviously sort of got from other YouTubers as well as you guys leaving comments down below so yeah, guys, always let me know what you'd like to see me uh, sort of do in the future or if there's anything uh, you think I'm doing wrong or any sort of advice for, well, making things easier and better for me painting. So I've got my miniature, I've got my tools. Now it's just a simple case of cutting them out and gluing them together. So always go with the uh, the instructions, even though this is a fairly simple little miniature. And obviously as there is only one sort of miniature on this sprue, um, yeah, I shouldn't really make too many mistakes. But I'm still going to follow the instructions just in case. So usual thing here, obviously you cut off the, uh, well, the parts and then clean up any sort of sprue cut marks or even any mould lines. Um, this figure wasn't too bad. Uh, it's really weird because there are some figures that uh, Games Workshop do and they are absolutely horrendous. I've got a feeling they're probably the older ones. Um, you'd like to think they are improving their newer miniatures and not having the sort of mould lines. Uh, this guy, I say, he wasn't too bad. A few bits here and there. But went together really easy. And, well, not many, many parts to him either, which is pretty cool. So even though I was using or following the instructions, you probably could get away with just sort of uh, eyeballing this and, yeah, sticking the bits here and there. As I am now into, well, doing lots of painting, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments, guys, if there's any sort of particular, well, model you'd like to see me paint. Um, obviously, I, am, I do love doing the kill teams, so they're probably the only sort of, like, big sort of sets I'll do. Uh, well, say big sets. They sort of range between about 6 and 12 people, so they're not all that big. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any sort of bosses you'd like to see me uh, see me make. And as you can clearly see, I'm putting this dude on a base. And that's because, obviously, he's not going to be used or played with by me. Um, I do prefer clear bases for any miniatures that I play with, or use, or, yeah, play with. I'm a big kid. Um, yeah, I like to stick him on a clear base. But as this dude isn't going to go uh, in any games that I'm going to play, I am going to try and sell this, this little chap. So if you want to buy this chap, guys, um, I have got an eBay account, and, well, yeah, most of the miniatures I am painting now that are ones I'm not playing with, I am going to try and sell, just so I can buy, well, more grey plastic. As I am a bit new to making bases, I'm keeping mine fairly simple at the moment, and as you can see, just a bits of cork there. Um, this chap, as he is a beast boss, well, I think it's only fit and there's loads of sort of bones down below him. So some time ago I bought a big box, I think it's a hundred skulls, variety of sizes, shapes, looks. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to stick a few down the bottom here. Again, this um, the old plastic is nice and soft, so it's easy to cut with the old snips just to get uh, some of the skulls to sort of go in at an angle, as though they are kind of buried. And then yeah, simply using a bit of the old super glue, sticking it on the ground there, and then just putting these in. No real pattern. Um, what I'm trying to do is have some that are sort of looking up, some that are sort of looking down. And say I will cut a few of them, just so they look like they are sort of half sunken. Um, but yeah, as you can see, some of these skulls were painted. Um, I'm not too sure why, because I must. Have, I haven't used any of these skulls for quite some time. But there's obviously some project way back when, and yeah, I painted a few of them up. There are a few gaps here and there, so again, keeping the basin nice and simple. I'm just using this little sort of gravel sand, and yeah, simply a case of putting glue here, there, and everywhere. And then sprinkling the sand on, and then obviously waiting for it to dry, and yeah, then we can crack on with the painting. I hope you guys are enjoying the painting videos. If there's anything you want to see me do in particular, or anything you want me to change about these videos, then yeah, let me know. So that's him done. Now it's a case of priming him in black and getting ready to, uh, to paint him. So, good old magic, Bosch. There we go, primed in black, and now we're ready to do some dry brushing. If you'd seen one of my recent videos, um, yeah, I've got a new tip for dry brushing, and that's this bad boy. It's a textured dry brush palette. Uh, as kind of suggested, recommended, or mentioned by quite a few of you guys in one of my previous um, videos. So again, that's why, guys, I'm always saying leave comments down below, because I do read them. Uh, I don't always have time to sort of reply to every single one, but I do read most of the comments, and yeah, they give me lots of tips and tricks and certainly help me out in my painting journey. And this textured palette does make things a lot easier when it comes to dry brushing, as I can load my brush up, then rub it over all the lovely texture. Um, so not only does it get rid of the paint from the dry brush, or from the brush to make it into a dry brush, 
but it also lets me know how much paint is on there. So when I get to the stage where I like how it looks, I can just go straight over my miniature and yeah, instant dry brush without putting too much white on or not enough. And now the other fun easy bit, let's get the Army Painter Speed Paints on. So I'm using a variety of their Speed Paints, well the older ones, and the Speed Paints 2.0. So I do have a lovely collection now and I believe I've got about 18 different greens. But as you can see, the green I've chosen to go with here is Charming Char Chartreuse. Um, yeah, obviously I'm not very good at saying some of these words. <laughs> uh, I do get a little bit tongue-tied. But yeah, I am going to try and do my best to, obviously when I do paint miniatures, is to show every single paint that I use, just in case if you like the colour scheme and you want to sort of use some of the colours, then yeah, you'll know exactly which one I've used. Because um, I must admit, I've got 18 different greens. There's definitely a good two or three that are my favourite, especially for orc skin. And you'll see me use them more often than the others. And there's probably a few greens that uh, I have tried and, well, will probably never ever use again because I just don't like how they come out, really. So the other thing I'm kind of doing different now, and that is anything that's meant to be metal. Uh, rather than doing my usual or my old style of just or painting it silver and then chucking on a black wash, I now prefer to go in with the uh, with a dark grey and then just get a silver and do sort of edge highlights. I do have a few of the metallic speed paints from Army Painter and whilst they're okay, um, yeah, they're not great. They're more like a two-tone as opposed to most of their um, the speed paints are obviously like three-tone. As in, in the crevices, they are a nice dark colour. In the sort of normal flat areas, they're like a well, a mid-tone normal range. And then in the, uh, the sort of edges, they're really like highlighted. Uh, with the metallic uh, paints, they are more just two-tone. You get like a darker shade and then just a normal shade. So yeah, that's why I am trying out new things when it comes to doing metal. Although I will be trying out soon uh, the old non-metallic metal. I've seen quite a few videos on it and obviously the people make it look easy. And I know it's not because it is that case of practice makes perfect. So these people have spent hours sort of refining what they do. Um, yeah, they've got it down to a knack and make it look easy. But I will be having a go and I'll, I'll post the results here. So whether it succeeds or doesn't, uh, you'll still get to see the video. Just because it'll be uh, obviously interesting for me to sort of look back on. And for you guys to see, well, if I have gone wrong, where I've gone wrong. And then hopefully, if I have gone wrong, in a month or two's time, I might be able to do it properly. And you'll be able to see the uh, sort of the benefits of all the practice makes perfect. Anyway, enough of that waffle. Let's get back to the painting. Uh, obviously, you can see on the screen every now and then, the colours that I am using will sort of pop up. And this Slaughter Red um, Army Painter Speed Paint is definitely one of the ones that does work really well. So this is definitely a red... Um, sort of a, a go-to red for me, I guess, just because I know it goes on really well on the old sort of slap chop style painting, and yeah, always looks uh, really good and a lovely looking red. So when it comes to painting, guys, how do you choose which colours you use to paint? Well, certain bits. Um, obviously, like the back here, this is obviously some sort of well scaly skin that he's turned into a cloak, skirt, dress, well, whatever it is. Um, and yeah, when I first looked at it, my instant thing was to paint it sort of like a green, just because it kind of looked like a crocodile skin. Uh, but then sometimes you kind of think, well, let's paint a little bit outside the box and do it a colour that I wouldn't normally use, which is kind of why I went with the uh, the purple, just because purple isn't a colour I generally tend to use that much. But yeah, how do you guys go about choosing which colours you, well, you, you paint your armies in? Do you look sort of online through inspiration or do you just sort of wing it um, just put out some paints and <laughs> start painting and sort of see where it goes. Um, yeah, it's like, cause I am relatively new to painting. Uh, it's only in the last sort of seven months that I've kind of really got into it and, well, obviously clearly absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, as I am painting more and more different sort of type types of miniatures, um, yeah, I do wonder what sort of colours to do them. Um, rather than just doing them, obviously, the colour that they sort of like show on the box. Again, because I don't actually play Warhammer 40k, um, I don't need to sort of follow any particular law or sort of paint schemes that are are meant to go with certain figures. So I can really, really be very loose in yeah in my sort of choice. Although sometimes I think that makes it a bit more difficult when there is such um, well such a large choice of paints. So especially with Army Painter now, um, yeah, I have got a lot of their paints, which obviously I'm certainly not complaining because it is is lovely. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it can be difficult to choose what colours sometimes. Right, so that's him pretty much done. So this is all the uh, sort of the Army Painter speed paints, and this is probably where I would have sort of normally have left him. 
Um, I say, he's come out really well. It's done in under an hour. But now I'm going to try and sort of improve my painting to that next sort of level. And that's doing some edge highlighting. Which, yeah, it's something I've never really done much of. In fact, it's only the last sort of couple of videos where I've given it a go. Um, I think the only problem I do tend to generally have is not always knowing where to do it. <laughs> I know some people go, well, it's kind of obvious. You do it on all the raised bits. Um, but yeah, it's not necessarily all the raised bits, is it? Because obviously it's maybe the raised bits that get hit by the light. And I think for me, that's the hardest bit now is trying to work out where the light source is coming from. Um, I mean, I know typically it'd be sort of like 45 degrees up in the air shining down because that's kind of, well, where the sun is, I guess. Um, and this really is where I think practice will make perfect. The more I do, the more I'll understand, well, what looks better, really. So for the moment, um, I am almost just going around highlighting any areas that are raised. Oh, and this is the other reason why I absolutely love orcs. Uh, they have the simplest eyes, or one of the simplest eyes going. A little drop of red in there, and yeah, they're done. As opposed to trying to do a human eye with a little bit of white and then a little, uh, well, a pupil. So I, I generally stick clear of, uh, of eyes on anything. I always give them helmets. <laughs> but uh, yeah, orcs, good old orcs, nice little bit of white. So yeah, edge highlighting, and I do a little bit of stippling as well. I just love this effect. Again, I think it's because it's a bit more sort of uneven, um, a bit more natural looking because it isn't sort of too neat, too tidy, it's a bit sort of here and there. And yeah, rust, I've been, I used Dirty Down Rust before. This is the first time I'm using the yellow one. The other one I used was a nice brown one. A uh, couple of things to point out with the Dirty Down Rust, it works fantastic, but you really need to do shake this bottle. Um, I know we always say that with most paints, you give them a bit of a shake and then you start using them. This Dirty Down Rust, you need to really shake it. Um, and in this case, I actually could put a little uh, stick in it to stir it up. Because uh, these do have a lot of thick stuff in them uh, that needs to be obviously broken down and dissolved into the rest. They have balls in them. Who are, madam? So you can give it a good old shake and it will sort of mix it all in. But yeah, you do need to make sure it's well and truly shooken up. Uh, and even hold the bottle for a bit just to warm it up because that, um, that does seem to help. So going back over it again with um, a little bit of, oh, I'm not sure what this is. It's not kind of like dry brushing, it's not wet brushing, it's just um, haphazardly brushing with a bit of paint on a very small brush. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know all the technical terms. Um, but yeah, this seemed to work. It just gives the the um, the metal, well, back to looking a little bit more metally, uh, with a few edges that are scuffed. Um, and yeah, I mean, it looks great. So I, I love it. I love... I love painting. I don't know how much I can say that. I just love painting. So even if this isn't to anyone else's style, as in how I painted this, I've thoroughly enjoyed the whole painting experience, and I'm very, very pleased with the end result. Um, again, I know this is where we're all different. We all have different expectations. We all have different likes. Some people will like something, and other people won't like it. So I know what I'm doing isn't for everyone, uh, but it's certainly for me. And if you can take anything from this video, then awesome. Even if it's just a case of, yeah, that's not how I want to paint. I'm going to do it completely different. <laughs> um, but that is fine. And there we go. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how he's come along. Uh, one last little thing. This eyeball. Um, I was going to do some sort of pupil or something on it. But then I thought, well, no, because I'll just be pants at that. And then I saw these little transfers I've got. And I thought, yeah, I'll have a go at doing this one. But it is, I mean, it is diddy. I, mean, I, I don't do transfers much. And, yeah, to do one this small... It, it took a few attempts, so even though what you're seeing, this was, I think, the third, maybe even the fourth transfer. Because all the others, as I pulled them off of the sheet, they kind of ripped and disintegrated. So this was a case of fourth time lucky. And yeah, I think it just finishes off the uh, the little, is it a little squig? I think it just finishes them off really nicely. And then the last thing to do before we call him done, and that's just to add a bit of a uh, sort of blood effect on his rusty sword just to make it look like he has actually been, uh, well, been in some action. And I find the best way of doing this, obviously good old um, speed paints, but then dabbing it with your finger. Two kind of reasons for this. One, it sort of smudges the paint, so it makes it nice and uneven. And two, it's obviously like a quick way of drying it, and it makes it look like the other uh, paint, or the blood in this case, has been there for quite some time. So just sort of keep doing that, a uh, bit of smudging, bit of painting, bit of smudging, until you're happy with it. And then, yeah, it definitely looks like his weapon has seen some action and taken down some space marines. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought of this one. 
and what you might like to see me sort of try in the future. I have still got the airbrush that I need to try out. Um, so yeah, a video of that will be coming up. And again, if I make a right mess of it, you'll get to see the video and, well, you'll be able to see where I kind of went wrong. And don't forget, guys, this figure is going to be on uh, eBay if you wanted to buy this or anything else I put on there. There's a link down in the description. As everything I sell from there, well, kind of goes back into me getting more stuff for the channel. And if you are new here and you like what I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. As well as anyone that already is um, subscribed, turn on the bell, guys, because obviously you might miss out on some of my videos as I am now posting, well, a good two, maybe even three a week. As, well, as we all know, I love painting. And I am super happy with how this guy has come out. Um, it almost makes me want to make, um, well, an orc army. But for the moment, I am just going to stick with my kill teams. Big shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons and Chaos Cards for helping support the channel. There is a link down below, guys. Get yourself a discount on your miniatures from Chaos Cards. And there is another video on the screen. Give that a click. See more of my stuff. You guys take care. See you in the next one. Bye for now.